not a seed mess. But that's all right. Today I am going to show you how to organize your seeds in a couple of different ways on how to do it. Don't forget to hit subscribe to this channel because at the end of the gardening season we will be going ahead and doing a seed giveaway which is going to come from my personal garden to yours. Don't mind me, I'm organizing seeds. So if you want to stay tuned for that and the live streams once we hit 500 subs we will be doing giveaways on the live streams as well. Thank you for your support and your time. Alright, so our first trick is coffee containers. I save my plastic ones, keep them in my canning cabinet. But if you do use these, you're going to want the silicone gel packets to help keep the moisture out of your containers. Because sometimes they get pretty humid in the house. So, that being said, we'll move on to our next one. I don't drop the containers all over the place. Coffee containers come in handy for so many different things. There we go. I don't want it sliding all over. Our next one are these little pencil pouch holders. You put them in a free ring binder so you got big seeds like we have right here. You just fit them right in there. So those are my pink lady climbing beans that get a little over six foot tall. So we could put those in this. Now you have tackle boxes. Tackle boxes come with dividers. If they do get shaped, shook up, your small seeds will mix in together, so that is definitely a downfall. This is better for bigger seeds than the small ones. The next one is the seed basket or box, which I see everybody doing. I understand the whole concept on it, but that's not really my thing. This, you can pick these up at the dollar store. And on the front, they have a little pocket, which I took and printed out pictures of beans and peas. And this little photo album. They're like $1.25 piece. So go ahead and get some of my beans put in here. Now there's some of my peas from this year. Yeah, there's my beans. And all you're going to do is slip these into the pocket, which I have one that I already started. So. <laughs> that looks like I got one each in there. But you get the concept. You can, another idea for you when it comes to these photo albums, is you can buy more durable photo albums, or the sleeves on Amazon. I think it holds like 400 pictures for, what was it, 12 bucks? Which really isn't a bad deal. But you can also go ahead and... You can do companion planting. We're going to be doing segments on companion planting and how we grow organically this year on our channel. So our nasturtiums can go with either cucumbers 
There's another cucumber. I, I got enough cucumbers. I shouldn't be ordering more seeds, but I can't help it. Beets. Nasturtiums have a natural bad bug resistant property to them. So that'll definitely help you out. Um, our tomatoes love basil, oregano, corn. There's our tomatoes. So our tomatoes. And there's another tomato. And basil will help deter um, the tomato hornworm. There we go. I was trying to remember the name of it. So that's a good companion. I don't want them little buggers. Carrots. Go good with the marigolds. And the sheer shums, or even certain types of herbs. So, we are also going to be doing several different things in the garden this year. We are going to be saving seeds, which is a must nowadays. Because God knows you don't want to spend as much as I do every year on a garden. Some people probably spend a little bit more than four hundred dollars on seeds and plants. There are people out there that have more of a seed addiction than I do. Oh, that's a good companion too. Marigolds and the cabbage. The reason being so that way you don't get the cabbage worm or cabbage moth. As we call it in my state. Uh, the next option you're going to have for seed storage, if I get these apart, is I wrote on each envelope, and these envelopes will fit in these pockets. So, just a little baggie. And you just stick it in there, you don't even have to seal it. So I like I said I like the photo album one more. Plus you can this is from a couple years ago, so you can write the year on it. And the reason why I say you can write the year on it. Your first year, if you go and you save these seeds, you didn't plant all of them. You, know, you got about 10 15 more seeds in this packet and you don't plant them for the next two or three years because you've canned your produce and you just don't need them so you're using your space for something else in your garden the seeds over time which i'll do a video on they will grow but they will not meet the expectations of when you first got your seed packet so you want to keep that in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and start organizing all this mess. Because God knows it's a mess. See, these ones are, this is my uh, climber book. Let's see. Let's see if we got any more climbers in here. Flip that over, that might help. Oh, we have our Malabar spinach, which is a climber. There's our watermelon. She's a climber. All right, that's all I'm seeing for climbers right now. This sugar baby watermelon is out of this world. I like this company. I've always ordered from them. It gives you a little bit of history on it. Popular ice bike, ice box sized melon among gardeners. Early six to ten pound melons are so sweet. 
gives planting instructions and the company name, the depth, all that great stuff. So we're just going to stick that in here. You can categorize these two if you want with your spinach, with your spinach, your butternuts with other type of climbing squash. I'm not really particular at this point in time, but you see how much more convenient it is. Oh, I forgot a cantaloupe. Well, I got an empty spot in here for that. There. Uh, delicate squash. They're pretty good. I have well over 300 seeds in this pocket. So we'll stick that in here too. With certain photo albums, you want to be really careful with this thin plastic because it will tear. I've lost count how many times it would tear. Acorn squash, I'm not positive if that's what's in here or not. But, we'll consider that a mystery seed. The sirens just went off by the house, so the dog is decided to bark and howl. Fuzzy baby, you're fine. There's green beans. Empty envelopes. We got parsnip seeds. Chamomile from 2015. Sugar babies 2015. Those are some seeds I have saved. The yellow squash 2019. Those are 19s. Those are 19s. And look, our root crop book. I'm just going to see, you do have a little bit of gapping in here, but it's a lot more organized than what I used to have. Parsnips, you got carrots, carrots, onions, and beets for my root crops this year. You can do, obviously, an herb photo book, which should be convenient. So I'm going to get all my herbs together and get another photo album so I can save those in there, which will be a lot easier for me. It's just what I prefer and my opinion and the way things work for me. But, it'll definitely lend a hand if you decide to do this route. Yeah, that's two, four, six, eight. There's ten different herbs in this. So why not throw them all in one area where you're going to know where they are and say, oh shoot, I had to order that. And come to find out afterwards, you have three packages. As you can see, that's what happened with my beets. Couldn't find them, ordered more, and I just found another beet packet. So I might go to the woods and decide to throw some seeds down and feed the wild critters this year. Because I forgot, I have two. There's four. I have five beets in here. Another way you can do your seeds is doing all cold crops together. So your parsnips, your carrots, your beets, your Brussels sprouts, broccoli, and your cabbage. Might help if I turn that up the right way. So that does come in handy too, putting all your cold crops together, which I might think about doing myself. So now that you have your own few ideas that you can use on how to store your seeds for your gardening seasons to come, 
You're more than welcome. Like and subscribe to this channel so you can see our gardening segment this year. Thank you so much and have a wonderful weekend.